Hi, my name is Wen Tao Wong, and I'm a senior undergrad from Tsinghua University. Today, I'm going to talk about a paper titled Optimal Load Balancing with Locality Constraints. This is a joint work with Xing Yizhou, who is now an assistant professor at Weinstein University, and Professor Sri Khan from UIUC. This talk is about how should we design algorithms for data centers and to enable fast cloud computing. Cloud computing are now indispensable part in people's life nowadays. Big platforms and companies such as Google, Microsoft, and Amazon are using hundreds of thousands of servers to enable their own applications, like large-scale data processing, search engines, and cloud storage. So in today's application, the cloud platforms need to tackle about millions of job submissions every day. These jobs are served by tens of thousands of servers in data centers. To support this need, one critical component is load balancing. In the classical model of load balancing, there is a dispatcher responsible of dispatching each incoming job to one of the servers in order to get the job finished. Since users are in general impatient and time is just money, one key design goal for load balancing in, is to obtain very fast response time for jobs. Previously, when jobs are only simple and computing tasks, the dispatcher is able to dispatch jobs to any servers. In this case, it has been shown that drawing the shortest queues is delay optimal for homogeneous servers. That is, all servers are sharing the same computing speed. However, the assumption that jobs can be done in all servers will fail in new life applications. Indeed, in modern load balancing, the dispatcher has to take into consideration the so-called locality constraints. That is, a computing job can only be served by servers with the data or specifically the trained machine learning models the job needs. For example, suppose a user submits a query of a pre-trained NLP model, that is the yellow job here. Then the dispatcher can only dispatch this job to the third server because only this server has the NLP model. On the other hand, if a user submits the green job asking for CV inference, then the dispatcher can either dispatch it to the first or second service because they all have the required machine learning model. But it is infeasible for the dispatcher to route the job to the third server. Same things happen for the purple job, which can, which can only be served by the third server. Therefore, due to the locality constraints, we must rethink algorithm for load balancing. And the design goal is always to obtain an optimality in mean response time for all jobs. To model the locality constraint in this paper, we specifically consider a refined load balancing model called the bipartite load balancing. In this model, there is a bipartite graph with L left node and N right nodes. Left nodes in this graph represent different types of jobs, which will need different types of data. And right nodes in this graph represent different servers in the data centers. Jobs of different types will arrive into the system in independent for some processes with possibly different arrival rates. For the servers, service time of jobs will follow exponential distributions but may have different service rates decided by the server itself. Each server will have its own queues and they will serve jobs in a first come first serve manner. Then to model the locality constraints, we make use of edges in the bipartite graph. A job of type L can be served by a server R if and only if there is an edge connecting the two nodes. And when a job arrives, the dispatcher can only route the job to a connected server in the bipartite graph. The goal is to design algorithm to dispatch incoming jobs 
to feasible servers so that the mean response time is minimized. We know that the design of optimal load balancing algorithms in the bipartite graph model indeed connect two relatively separate literatures. One is load balancing with locality constraints, and the other one is load balancing with heterogeneous servers. For locality constraints, when arrival rate and service rates are uniform, and the number of servers scale to infinity. Previous work showed that John Deschartes Q and Power of D can achieve the same performance as if there is no constraint at all when the bipartite graph is well connected according to some condition. Some relatively early work considers service rate that depends on both job types and servers and proves that John Deschartes Q with max rate scheduling and some possible variants can achieve heavy traffic optimality when the graph satisfies specific conditions. Then for load balancing with heterogeneous servers, it is shown that JIQ can achieve asymptotic zero rating probability. And the performance of a variance of power of D in this case is also studied in the many server region. However, no algorithm has been provided with the optimal response time in the many server region. Nevertheless, it is shown that John the shortest queue and the threshold policy are heavy traffic optimal in mean response time. And power of D can also be optimal when service rates of servers satisfy certain constraints. So motivated by the above discussion, in this paper, we try to answer the following two questions. First, how should we design the load balancing algorithm in order to achieve optimality in the new bipartite load balancing model? We say that an algorithm is optimal if it can minimize the mean response time of jobs asymptotically when the number of servers scales to infinity. In addition to the asymptotic results, we also want to obtain upper bound on the mean response time when the system size is finite. The hope is to bound the deviation from the limit for a finite size system. Then the result can not only be valid for asymptotic limit, but also works for realistic systems. Our result is as follows. We first identify a condition called well-connected graph. Then if the bipartite graph is well-connected, load balancing in this system is almost like a fully connected bipartite graph. That is just like there is no locality constraint. We rigorously prove that when the system is well-connected, drawn the shortest queue will have asymptotic zero delays when servers are all having the same speed. Here, JSQ for locality constraints means that for each job arrival, we will pick a server which is feasible for this job type and is having the shortest queues among all feasible servers. So when the system is well connected and servers are homogeneous, JSQ is a nice algorithm because jobs will never wait in a queue. Then for the case when servers are heterogeneous, that is servers are having different speed. We show that an algorithm, which we called John the fastest of the shortest queues, can minimize the mean response time as in positive. Know that this result is stronger than a zero delay result because it also takes into consideration the service time of a job. JSSQ is a simple variance of JSQ when there are multiple feasible servers with the same shortest queue length, JFSQ will break the tie by choosing the server with the fastest speed. Let us take a look at this example. Suppose there are two empty servers with service rates of two and one. Then JFSQ will route up to the first one and it is the optimal choice. But JSQ will think that the two servers are the same and may make a suboptimal selection by routing the job to the second service. 
Then in addition to the two asymptotic optimality results, we also provide a delay bound for ZFSQ for finite size systems. Informally, the bound claims that for ZFSQ, the mean response time is approximately equal to the lower bound of mean response time plus one over square root of n. So these are basically the three results covered in our paper. We can also take a look at the simulation results. We consider a low constraint system with heterogeneous servers and compare the mean response time of JFSQ with JSQ, JIQ, and the variance of power of D with a lower bound on the mean response time. We also include the result of JFIQ, that is strong plastic of the idle queue, as our results also applies to it. By varying the system load from 0 0.1 to 0 0.95, we can see JFSQ and JFIQ consistently outperform the other algorithms with their mean response time very close to the lower bound. We can also notice that JSQ and JIQ indeed have a poor performance when the system is idle. This is because when many queues are empty, JSQ and JIQ simply choose servers blindly and is bad for the mean response time. To formally introduce our results, let us make some assumptions of the model and have some simplification. First, let us restrict our scope to the case of homogeneous servers. And later, we will extend the result to heterogeneous case. In this model, we assume that each server will have a finite buffer size and then know the sum of all arrival weights to be n times lambda. Then we will assume that n will scale to infinity and lambda can be written as one minus gamma times n to the minus alpha, where alpha is a constant between zero and 0 0.5. This traffic low regime can represent the classical many server regime and also the recently proposed sub halving weight regime. Based on the above assumption, we can now present the well kinetic condition and the final system found in an informal way. The well kinetic assumption requires that for any subset S of servers, such that its size is at least the same order of M, the total arrival rate of job type that cannot be served by these servers is upper bounded by a constant D tilde times M. It in this means that for a sufficiently large subset of servers, almost all job arrivals can be served by these servers. Then it will seem like there are no locality constraints and the graph looks like a fully kinetic graph. Then when the graph is well kinetic, we show that for any epsilon less than one minus lambda over four, with the constant D tilde is small O of epsilon, then the total expected queuing length of all servers and the John D shortest queue is upper bounded by n times lambda plus epsilon plus big O of one over epsilon. Then by Little's law, the mean response time of this system is given by the total queue length over n times lambda. Therefore, the mean response time is upper bounded by one plus epsilon over lambda plus big O of one over n times lambda. We can take epsilon to be small o of one, and thus as n goes to infinity, the mean response time will simply convert to one. It then implies that John the short system can have the property of zero weighting when the locality constraints satisfy the well connected assumptions. But how strong is the requirement of well connected by paragraph? Indeed, we show that this requirement can be easily satisfied by a random bipartite graph. We show that if a node of L connects with a node J, with probability given by this formula, then the assumption will hold with probability at least one minus two to the minus N. More crucially, it implies that our model can significantly reduce the edges needed in the bipartite graph. In the classical load balancing model, 
required that the bipartisan is fully connected. That is, if there are n job types and n servers, we will need n square edges in the bipartisan graph. If we see each edge as a copy of data, then we will need n square copy of data to obtain a good performance. However, our random graph result shows that to maintain the property of a well-connected graph and to obtain good response time, we only need to keep n over one minus number times lot one over one minus number copies of data. When the traffic load lambda is a constant, we only need O n copies of data, saving a lot of resources for the data centers. Then to prove our finance system results, we indeed extend previous analytical framework of classical load balancing. Particularly, our proof involves two steps. For the first step, we make use of the real connected property and show that under this assumption, the load balancing algorithm can indeed pull all demands into a single stream. The intuition is that for joint shortest queue, when there is a feasible empty server, it will always route the job arrival to an empty server. Then when the real connected assumption holds, a job arrival will have a high probability to find one feasible empty server. So it seems like there is just no constraint at all. And the bipartisan load balancing model will look like the classical model. Then to show that JSQ can achieve optimal delay, we further show that it can lead to a phenomenon called resource pooling. That is, we are able to show rigorously that the system dynamic is approximately equal to an MM1Q, where all servers are grouped into a big server of service rate M. Then the expected waiting time in this system is given by one over one, N times one minus number. And we can deduct that to show the optimal performance of GSQ in the original bipartite load balancing model. So after the homogeneous case, we can now extend the results of heterogeneous servers. As we previously mentioned, JSQ is not response time optimal. This is because when there are many idle servers, JSQ can only choose one randomly. But we show that JFSQ is optimal because it can break ties in favor of the fastest servers. And particularly, JFSQ doesn't need to know the service rate exactly because it only needs to compare the service speed of two servers. The key to prove our result is to show that JFSQ will only use fastest servers and will use minimum number of servers to satisfy the traffic demand. And thus it can achieve optimality in mean response time. Specifically, assume there are in total M types of servers with service rate mu M. The M type of server is having N times alpha M servers. By the stability constraint, we require that the summation of mu M times alpha M times rho M is equal to lambda. And here, rho M means the fraction of BC servers of type M. And the objective of the optimization problem is to minimize the total number of BC servers. We show that it is indeed a lower bound on the mean response time. And particularly, we can show that JFSQ can lead to this solution of the optimization problem. That's because JFSQ will fill each type of server in a sequential way, and it will favor fastest servers over the slowest servers. Then as a result, the expected total Q length can match the lower bound when we use JFSQ, and JFSQ is asymptotically optimal. We also characterize the finite system bound for JFSQ through the same framework discussed before. To conclude this work, we introduced bipartite load balancing model to study locality constraints and we show that when the underlying bipartite graph is well connected, JSQ is optimal for homogeneous servers because it can achieve asymptotic zero delays. We also provide a delay bound to find the deviation. For the more general case with heterogeneous servers, 
We show the FSQ can obtain the optimal mean response time. So that's all for this talk and thank you so much for listening. Keep safe and hope you can enjoy reading the paper. Thank you so much.